Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy to be posting again. I've been wanting to post for a very long time, but I've just not been good at balancing my uni life with other things so i've just not found the time to film a video edit and post even though i really like posting on youtube and the amount of views i got on the last video is insane i've got like 13k views on that video which every time i look at it it i'm it makes me happy and then sad at the same time that i can't post as much as I want to. I'm definitely gonna try to balance my uni life with everything else a bit more next year because posting on YouTube is something I really like doing, like making a video, editing it, posting it, it's something I really enjoy doing and since I see I get so many positive responses for my videos, on my videos, it definitely motivates me to post more but I just sometimes don't find the time. So I'm gonna try to post more this summer. I found an unedited, like half edited video from February. So we're now in July and I'm back home for summer. I found a half edited video from February when I was back in London and I had uni. It was like a little vlog of my day and also me talking about five facts about civil engineering. And I looked at the vlog bit and it was actually quite funny and I really wanted to post it. But the first bit wasn't very well filmed, so there was a lot of pauses and things like that. So I thought I would refilm the first bit of that video. I will also include the vloggy bit at the end so you guys can see, but that's from like five months ago. But still, it's a vlog of my day at uni. You guys can get a feel of what I used to get up to. But now I'm gonna talk about five things i wish i knew before picking civil engineering at imperial college i also asked some of my course mates to tell me their ideas i'll talk about some of the points they raised and then what my opinion on them is kind of like an overall review of the second year slash civil engineering so far the first and second year if you guys find this video helpful please give it a thumbs up to my okay, so the first thing I would like to talk about personally because it's something that I was not expecting when choosing civil engineering as a degree. Um, it might be something that is obvious to a, lot, to a lot of people, but to me, it was not. It was a little bit of a shock when I found out that the course is very involved with a lot of other modules that aren't necessarily just designing a building and structural design and maths and calculations on like forces and things like that. So there are two modules which are environmental engineering and soil mechanics and geotechnics. Theory based modules which are about like geography, geotechnics is about rock, you learn about rocks and like in environmental engineering, you learn about water and water management, things like that, which are the other side of civil engineering that I was kind of not really expecting, which I should have probably done more research um, because this might be obvious to a lot of people, but I just thought I would say this because to me, I was expecting a lot more just structural design and buildings and roads and bridges and things like that which you you will come across things like that a lot but there's also another part to it which is geotechnics and geography and soil mechanics and water and things like that i mean especially in the second year the soil mechanics module is actually worth 10 units i think so i think it's worth 10 units compared to other um, modules which are worth like five units only so it's worth double some other modules so it's actually quite important and if you are choosing civil engineering just because you like designing buildings and roads and bridges and you think you'll be designing like beams and things like that yes you will be but you will also be learning about sewage systems and dirty water and cleaning water and soils and geotechnics and rocks and things like that so that's also something to bear in mind which i wish i looked more into before choosing civil engineering as a degree the second thing some of my course mates also told me to talk about is the amount of coursework and 
field trips you get in the second year. So in the second year, we had two field trips which one was a surveying trip and that and that was meant to be done in the first year but because it was covid it got moved to the second year for us and we had another geotechnics field trip and we also had about five courseworks all due around the same time so all due in march i think it was so it was very different to the first year which only consisted of exams like eight exams at the end of the year that's also something to bear in mind that in the first year there are eight exams at the end of the year for civil engineering for some other courses some of those exams are in january so it's kind of more balanced which is less overwhelming i'd say so the eight exams at the end of the year was a bit too much but in the second year it's more coursework involved and you'll have more coursework which means some of the exams at the end of the year are worth less than they were in the first year some people found that helpful found the coursework helpful they learned the modules a lot more some people enjoyed the field trips more than the others did me personally i didn't enjoy the field trips i didn't really enjoy being out and about in fields on beaches looking at rocks being out in the heat in cargo pants measuring distances in a field that's that's personally not something i enjoyed doing a lot of people enjoyed doing it it just wasn't really for me the third thing to bear in mind is that i don't think this only applies to civil engineering a lot of other engineering courses on imperial i would say are the same but i'm just talking about civil engineering because i'm not too sure on the other modules coding and program languages are very important so in civil engineering you have a computational methods module where you learn matlab which is a programming language uh, you learn to code but matlab is also used in a lot of other modules so, so you'll have to know matlab to do a lot of coursework from other modules so i started my degree not knowing any coding and at the beginning i found it quite challenging the more i practiced the better i got but at first i found it challenging so having some sort of coding skill is very helpful if it's your summer and you're gonna start civil engineering in a few months then probably spending your time learning coding preferably matlab because that's what you'll be learning in civil engineering at imperial yeah that's probably the most useful thing to do another thing i personally wanted to say was the essays you need to write there is a module called business and project management and then we had another one last year which was professional engineering practice i think that was the module we had an essay on i think it was a 3000 words essay i think so so i'm not sure if that was something that i should have expected at uni to write essays but but yeah we had three essays um, in the first and second year. One essay, one 3,000 word essay in year one and two essays in year two, which one of them was a group work, but the other one was an individual essay we had to write. That's just something to bear in mind. I don't like writing essays. So every time I found out we need to write essays, I was a, I was a bit like, <sighs> but again, I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if other people do expect writing essays anyway at uni. Um, I'm not the best person at writing essays, but I didn't do that bad on that on the essays. So they're not overly difficult, but they are still something that you'll have to do. The last thing I want to talk about, which again, one of my course mates told me to say, is the timetable. So the way our timetable was last year. I'm actually going to bring it one second. Let's have a look. So this is the spring term. So this is a week in January from the 17th of January to the 21st of January. So on the Monday, we had a soil mechanics lecture for two hours from nine to 10. Then straight after we had a business and project management lecture from 11 to one. And then one to two, we had lunch. And then two to six, we had a structural mechanics lecture. Then on the Tuesday, at 10 a.m. to 12, we had a structural design lecture, 12 to 1 lunch, and then 1 to 3 fluid mechanics, 
and then three to five environmental engineering lecture. So all two hour lectures with an hour lunch. And then on Wednesdays, we only had computational methods, online lecture at home. I think it was one hour lecture and two hours tutorial or the other way around. Two hours lecture, one hour tutorial. I don't remember, but three hours of computational methods, but it was online on Wednesdays. So we usually stayed at home. I mean, I usually stayed at home on Wednesdays. Um, and then again on Thursday, it was all in person, like Monday and Tuesday. So from 10 to six, sorry, from 10 to four, we had lectures with like a one hour break in between. And then on Fridays, it was also a bit more quiet. So 10 to 12, we had a lecture, we had a statistics lecture. Um, yeah, and then that was it for that week. So it looked something like this. And this is in November, so the autumn term. So again, from nine, we had lectures until four with like a one hour lunch break. These were all in person. This was online, online as well, but these were in person. Again, from nine to five, we had lectures and then one hour break in between here and we had an office hour here. And then again, computational methods on Wednesday, which was all online. And then again, nine to four, 10 to four. And these are just my own like revision things. But yeah, this is what it mostly looked like. Yeah, I thought that would be useful for you guys to see the timetable because some people say imperial timetables are very different to other universities. So I thought it would give you a little idea of what it, what your day will look like. And obviously something that is that would be very obvious to a lot of you guys is that it is not easy. You will have to work very hard, be prepared for a lot of workload. That's all I can think of. If there's anything else you guys want to know, please comment down below. I will answer, I promise. I've been really bad with the other comments of the other videos. I want to be helpful on this channel. So if you post your questions, I will either answer them in the comment section or kind of add them all up and make another video answering them. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm also gonna include the little vlog I filmed back in February for you guys. It's just a day in my life at uni. I hope you guys enjoy. If you enjoyed, again, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and I will invite you to watch a day in my life at uni in February, 2022.
It's going to take longer because I just started. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. laptop was running out of charge and we're gonna have some orange 